So our next guest has correctly predicted the outcome of every presidential race since 1984. Historian Alan Lichtman was one of the only election forecasters who predicted that Donald Trump would win the White House back in 2016. President Trump even sent him a note of congratulations on a copy of the Washington Post article about his prediction. Joining me now with his forecast for 2020, Alan Lichtman, distinguished professor of history at American University. Professor, thank you very much for being here. Uh, so I'm sure everybody would like to know what your prediction is this time around and, and how you arrived at your prediction. Right. My totally nonpartisan system generates predictions, not endorsements. And the way it works is it's called the 13 Keys to the White House, and it gauges the strength and performance of the party holding the White House, Trump, of course, right now. And that means that it is governance, not campaigning, that counts. Imagine that. And the way the system works, if six or more keys go against the White House party, they are predicted losers, any six. That's how I was able to predict Trump in 2016, mm -hmm. because the Democrats had exactly six keys out against him. However, this time I have a different prediction. Now that Trump is the incumbent, he has seven keys out against him. And my prediction is that Donald Trump will become the first sitting president since George H.W. Bush in 1992 to lose a reelection bid, and Joe Biden will become the next president of the United States. So you just taking a look at those keys, if we could put them back up, I don't know if we'll have time sure. to get through all of them, but which ones stand out to you as sort of the most important of these keys, and can you explain what's underlying them? Yes. The keys that stand out most important are the ones that only turned in 2020 mm -hmm. after the pandemic and the cries for social and racial justice. Going into 2020, mm -hmm. Donald Trump was looking great with only four keys down, but then we had the pandemic, which never got resolved, and the call for social and racial justice, which never got resolved, and cost Trump three more keys. The short-term economic key, measured by an election year recession, the long-term economic key, because despite the spike in the third quarter on a much lower base, growth is still negative and pushes down the average, and of course, the social unrest key, because of what's raging across the land and remains unresolved. So Trump goes from four keys down to seven keys down. Mm -hmm. Never in the history of the United States, Martha, has the party holding the White House ever suffered such a sudden and dramatic reversal of mm -hmm. fortune in just a few months. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting question because it, the things that you point to almost are in some ways out of the president, any president's control. They're the kind of things that happen to presidents, happen during their tenure. And of course, how they respond to them is, is one of the, the key measures. But I just wonder, you know, when you look back in history at, at other times when things, you know, became, become so overwhelming to the office that perhaps it's, there's not that much that a president can do to, to change those keys. Well, Herbert Hoover, a man who should know, mm. said very presciently, when you are the president, you get the credit for the sunshine and the blame for the mm. rain. And it's raining pretty hard on America right now. Mm. I think that is raining pretty hard. Um, Alan, thank you very much. Alan Lickman, interesting to uh, hear your perspective, and we'll see if you're right or if this is the first time that you're wrong, and uh, we'll talk after the election. Thank you, sir. Good to have you Absolutely. with us tonight.